Welcome to another episode of Reptile Fight Club. I'm Justin Julander. With me as always, Mr. Jeff Poland. Hey, hey. <laughs> well, what is going on in your world, Chuck? Work My settled world. down. Things are good. Work settled down. You had a couple days yep, off. Things are good. Yeah. I have. I've, I've taken a little vacation. Uh, yeah, just... Um, uh, my my AC just crapped out on me, so I'm gonna oh, have to fine. figure that out. Yeah, it's yeah. hotter than hotter than yeah. Satan's ass here right now. So <laughs> I'm sure it's um, real easy to find a AC at this time of year too. <laughs> yeah, so you know, even yeah. like we had to call and like leave a message. Not even the 24 hour places have called mm. us back. So yeah, I, I promise we're gonna suffer a little for this one. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I don't know what's going on. The my um, like my air handler unit's up in my attic and I'm getting leaking that's coming yeah. from my ceiling. So, yeah, not good. Not I, I, yeah, it looks like it's coming from the unit. So I'm not yeah. sure exactly what's going on, but. Now, do you, uh, get, the, do you get the nice like uh, coastal breezes and kind of that moderate uh, temperatures or, or are you sort of where you get kind of the heat? So I would I would describe where I am in in East Chula Vista as probably uh, the middle between the coastal the coastal breeze and the coastal temps and the inland uh, desert temps like we're okay. probably somewhere in the middle of that kind of best know? of both not, worlds huh? yeah a little bit so we're not yeah. you know not not quite like um, Hamul or or Del Zura or any of those inland. Um, that are kind of in in over the mountains, baking, or, or yeah. yeah, yeah. So they are absolutely baking out there, yeah. uh, and and it's not quite as nice, you know. Like on my way into work, uh, I take I go over the Coronado Bridge, and you can literally once you get up on that bridge, you can just if you have your windows down, you can feel the, the temperature drop like mm. ten degrees. Yeah. So it's you know you, you it, it's definitely not that same coastal breeze with the with, with the coastal cooling that you get, but um, yeah. yeah. So it's 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 hot here right now. So yeah. <laughs> I was, I was driving with the kids through LA once and I, and there was traffic of course, cause there's always traffic in LA, but we, um, were kind of baking in the car and I'm like, man, it's kind of warm. And, and I didn't really want to turn on the AC. I'm like, let's conserve the, you know, let's conserve the gas. Save the AC. Yeah. 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 And so <laughs> like the old school dad, you know, and, uh, I rolled down the windows and I'm like, Oh, it's really nice out there. It's like very uh, cool breeze coming in. So yeah, I, I guess it goes to figure that it was a really ritzy neighborhood. I'm sure you pay a yeah, premium you, to you, live in that zone. Of, were you driving through like Orange County, like like the beach uh, city? A little or? further north, but yeah, we, okay. we were driving from the zoo, and then there was some high school where like Teen Wolf was filmed and the girls wanted to go check that out. So being the wonderful dad that I am, I drove my daughters all over LA County looking for the place where Teen Wolf was filmed and they were very geeked out and excited, but it was not, not so enjoyable for me, but I just had a day at the zoo, so it was okay. Right. Yeah, right. Trade offs. That sacrifice. Compromises. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They, yes. they endured the zoo and I endured the, the Teen Wolf school, but that's a very <laughs> father. That's a very fatherly thing of you. To yeah. Do. But trying to get out of there was a nightmare. Just, so, oh, yeah. you know, just cars everywhere. I'm like, Oh my yeah. gosh. But yeah, yeah like, I, fe I feel like, there? I feel like anytime you pigeon your hole yourself into something like that in LA, you ultimately set yourself up for traffic yeah. where you're like, Oh, we're going to go here. We're going to go downtown or we're going to like go to Disneyland or we're going to uh -huh. do like, like all, uh, inevitably you set yourself up for like, Oh crap. How do we get out of this place? You <laughs> yeah, know? Right. So yeah. And it seems like everybody wants to get out of there at the same time. You know? Yes. Like it no, it, it's, like, up, the, it's like, yeah, oh, traffic. the Murphy's law of how, la yeah. works yeah well I, uh, we, no we went to the i think we went to the super show or one of the shows that was in san diego back in the day it was like mm -hmm. 98 or 97 you know and i think that's when i picked up my first jungle carpet from python pete but we were driving um back from uh san diego heading towards my cousins in rancho santa margarita and yep. And this is before, you know, phones and all that good stuff. So we were just going off of paper maps and we got in bumper to bumper traffic, you know, somewhere just, just north of San Diego. And then all of a sudden I'm, you know, we're just kind of sitting there zoned out, just kind of chatting or whatever, me and my wife. And then all of a sudden I see signs saying, welcome, you know, Los Angeles next five, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm like, wait, 
how did we get to Los Angeles? And so we're like way bypassed our exit and just missed it. And then we were just kept going in bumper to bumper traffic. So we were just sitting there for hours, but then we bypassed it by another hour and a half, you know? So like we had to turn yeah, around and go back. I'm feeling pretty stupid. You were stupid. real jacked up yeah. at that point. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was not, <laughs> not fun. So yeah. yeah. No. I'm like, how did I miss it? Cause you know, we, yeah, we did that drive a lot from, from, uh, Trey and Jenny, you know, you, yeah, you yeah. stayed there with us. Yeah. Driving yep. from yep. there to Anaheim or LA or whatever to go to That's the a little bit of a drive. It's a little yeah, bit of a yeah. drive. I mean, it's, it's an hour to LA. Yeah. 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 Good traffic, you know? So you're like, oh, yeah. well, how did I do this? Well, anyway? thankfully, but, gas was in $6 a gallon. <laughs> yeah. Back right. Then, but, yeah. Hey, we would have, hey, we would have had to live on the off. side of the road. <laughs> I don't care, meathead. Knock it off. <laughs> I swear he's using words there. <laughs> Dude, yeah. they talk. The yeah, Ruby no, or... they do talk. Yeah, that's Ruby. Yeah, they de- they definitely, it, yeah. It, we have conversations. So, yeah. Um, yeah, good good times. But good yeah, times. That, yeah, that traffic in California, man, you guys are in living there, I guess. But it's a, yeah. I guess you pay the premium to, to live in a nice place. But yeah, yeah and I, you I sure didn't catch me up your, in there. I'm jealous of your keeping reptiles outdoor ability and your uh, succulents, uh, growing of succulents in your yard ability. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah there's definitely. A lot of benefits. Definitely the plant and animal uh, benefits uh, and the weather benefits yeah. are there, but yeah. um, the traffic is, you know, and and you know, San Diego traffic is is mild in comparison yeah. to to L.A. I just I yeah. cannot I I just cannot. <laughs> with yeah. la it's the the traffic is like the worst yeah it's saying uh, it's uh, it's you know so wow well, yeah that's i guess uh there's pros and cons to wherever we live we should fight about you know it's whether facts. it's good to live in california or, or utah or whatever but well <laughs> probably I'm, not uh not not along the lines of the show but so yeah. you're you're swimming in geckos, huh? You got you got. Lots yeah, of I'm I'm yeah. I'm I'm busy with geckos. Yeah, I've got a I got to figure I got to figure I got to figure gecko problems out. I is yeah. like, am trying to get stuff back down to a more like not that it's unmanageable. It's just like a lot of work, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm feeding all this stuff, and I don't really need to. I need yeah. to do something here. So, yeah. um, just trying to trying to make that happen, and probably acknowledging the fact that I maybe miscalculated the market for. <laughs> for giant day geckos. Um, so, you know, you know, live, you learn. I like them. I like them, you know, but obviously other people, you know, it's funny too, because they're so so bright. They're diurnal. You know, you'd think they just kind of fly off the shelves, but yeah. Yeah. Go figure. I guess. Uh, yeah, it's funny. And then there's so many cool reptiles out there. It's, I guess that's a shocking thing to, to kind of come to the realization is that, we limit ourselves to, you know, just a handful of species that are popular, mm-hmm. like ball pythons, boas, bearded dragons, corn snakes. You know, you can kind of count them on one hand, <laughs> all the yeah. very popular things that are just in mass numbers. And you're like, well, and I, let's you know, diversify that's what, a little people. Let's. <laughs> I, I was kind of thinking about that. Like, okay, well, well, so giant day geckos, what's wrong? You know, like, yeah. okay, so you can't hold them like sure. a leopard gecko. Yeah. And they, maybe the they're big, not yeah. as many colors and, and morphs, you know, out mm-hmm. there, but uh, so but the colors uh, you they know, have are you know, like mind blowing. Yeah. yeah they're, they're they have, I mean, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and, green. and they've got a lot of personality, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, you know, I, I, yeah. um, yeah. That kind I, of monoculture I mean, that, you know, that we seem to go down and, you know, granted there's more resources and things for certain reptiles and maybe people are a little apprehensive of keeping something they're not, there's not a ton sure. of information about or, or well, their friend I mean, has one or whatever. You, you know, know, it would probably be, I would probably be doing, doing, a, having an easier life if I was doing a lot more of the micro geckos, um, you know, yeah. uh, a lot of the, the smaller Ligodactylus and the smaller, uh, Felsuma stuff, even, you know, I, I mean, but whatever, you know, I, I, I I don't know. I, 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 it's crazy because all of these problems that I've really gotten myself into is really over, um, one breeding pair of Uh grandis. So (laughs) I mean, like they're ridiculously prolific, um, which, 
you know, you, you know, if, if, if they ever caught on in the market, it would be, you know, I mean, I could see how it could go real bad, real fast, mm-hmm. uh, with, with, with the, with the, the, the boom and bust of the market, how it yeah. is, but, um, yeah, well, and, but yeah, know, ebb know. and flow of things like maybe, you know, things kind of come around again and become more yeah. popular people realize, Hey, this exists and this is very affordable and I can get one, you know, and just have it as a pet and look at it and be awed by its beauty, you know, that kind of thing. Huh? And, and, you know, I complain, but I mean, I, I just, I wholesaled four geckos today and, and mm-hmm. it made some room that I needed and I'm, yeah. I'll move the other ones. Like, it's not a big deal. It, it's yeah. just, you know, no one's barn burning down my door for giant day geckos which you know fair enough you know fair enough so i find um, it interesting because i put i i just have like a pair a couple pairs of uh of crested geckos in my office and so i produce you know uh, quite a few like they're pretty productive little geckos and mm -hmm. so i take them to the show put them on the table for you know 30 50 bucks something like that and and i mean there's breeders all around the show selling crested geckos (laughs) for five six hundred dollars Oh, there we go. That's me. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh and and then, you know, I, I'm like, how how are they buying these expensive ones, but you know, ignoring my less expensive ones, even though the ones I have come from pretty colorful adults and yeah. they look pretty nice. But you know, yeah, it, it is what it you is. Know, and and they do I, a much better job at marketing them than I do. And you know, I'm not known for crested geckos, so nobody's coming well, to the I mean, it, looking for them. And, and you know, I I don't really get that portion of the uh, of of the hobby. Uh, you know, I mean, I I I guess name recognition is a thing, right? Yeah, like it, sure. it's, it's definitely a thing, and and flashy marketing has, you know, I mean, for for goodness sake, you know, not everybody can have uh, a belly dancer at their table, but. Um, <laughs> But you know that's a thing, by the way. It oh, is a yeah. thing. Steve and I it, were just it, talking about that on Sunday. It happened. We were, we were chatting, yeah. and like he said, he saw that particular table, and I'm like, "Oh, did you find him by all the belly dancers?" And he's like, "No, he didn't have any of those this year." But yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think I think that might have been a one and done show. I, I don't know. So. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know the the caliber of belly dancers that he had were a little <laughs> sketchy. So yeah, I can't see that driving business to the table more like the other way around. But <laughs> hey, you got to try some marketing schemes i guess just put yourself out there (laughs) just shoot for the stars (laughs) oh boy yeah Yeah, you shoot well you just shoot for the top of the arc for something i guess (laughs) it doesn't i don't know how i don't know what kind of velocity you're getting to get you out of orbit but Uh, you're just shooting for the top of the arc wherever that is wherever that lands you might bounce off the ceiling pretty quick but you know that's correct at least you're shooting you're you're taking your shot I mean, if you hit the ceiling, you're at the top of the arc somehow. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I so the, the that reptile show a few weeks back. I um, saw some tortoises, and I can't get them out of my head. I don't know why, but I guess I it's I, I'm pretty sure they were specs uh, hingeback tortoises, mm-hmm. um, the Canixis specii, and they were really cool looking i mean they were imported and so they were cheap and they'd probably die mm-hmm. in a couple of weeks and so you know of course i'm not gonna contribute to that whole you know issue but um i found i found some you know captive bred stuff and i'm like oh do i want to yeah do i need to get towards it you know, i'm like t- somebody talk me out of this but i feel like i feel like beautiful you, animals i feel like yeah. you could do euromastics if you're gonna do that i know, you know seriously I mean? like, yeah that's you know uh, Yep. That, so that, uh, I, I don't know. I guess it's because because I, I, I think I told the story of getting my daughter uh, some tortoises. We got her some, um, you know, juvenile captive bred Herman's tortoises. You know, they're fun little thing, Just tiny little babies. You summer? Know, so she's, summer, yeah. She's really yeah, okay. excited about them and nice. you know, having a fun time, keeping them happy and healthy. And so and doing cool. it all right. So, yeah, it's really fun to to see her get excited about that. So. You know, and then I'm like, well, if we have these tortoises, why not get some? Uh, you know, oh my like, gosh, that's how yeah, it starts the right there. Keep, start turning. That's like that's yeah, the addict. That's the addict in you <laughs> rationalizing really is, yeah. your next purchase. But I mean, there's just so many cool reptiles. You know, can you fault me? But yeah, no. I need to, I, it, listen, I'm I need on to focus page. on what I have and getting you know them into bigger cages and stuff. Yeah, listen. I did, 
Oh, I'm here to support you. <laughs> yeah. And the, 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 the talking you out of it is Heidi's job. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And, and I mean, tortoises, they're, they're, they're not, I'm not going to be overrun by tortoises anytime soon. You know, they're, yeah. they take their time, but, um, so it's kind of a nice lesson in not getting instant gratification. So I think hopefully that'll be a fun project for summer, but hopefully they will yeah. be, you know, adult size before she's moved out of the house and gone, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah. we'll see. We've got plans now, to build is there like a, a standing, tortoise yeah, is there, and stuff, you know, that kind of thing. But is there a standing rule that they have to go with her or is this, is this like her pets become <laughs> your pets? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't mind uh, hanging on to him if she, yeah. you know, she can't take yeah. him with her, but she's convinced that they're coming with her wherever she goes. So All we'll right. All right. Works. That's fair. All right. I like that. Yeah. That's good. But That's good. It's, it's fun to watch and be excited about that and, you know, seeing her be responsible and keep these things well, you know, that she's out there every day, you know, making yeah. sure they're taken care of. So yeah, it's been fun. Um, you know, it's always fun to, you know, even if it's peripherally is, you know, my daughter's project to see new reptile species in the house. And of course I, I had a, uh, it wasn't a Herman's. It was a spur tortoise. The, the, uh, uh, the other, you know, European species. I can't, my brain's not functioning very well. I am not a but, tortoise uh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I cannot bail you out. Now. But, uh, very similar in appearance and, and, you know, just a different distribution in, in Europe. Um, but very similar tortoises. And I had one of those as a kid that my cousin gave me and I just, that was the coolest tortoise. It was really fun. I, um, so yeah, it's kind of brings make brings me back to childhood brings you back my yeah, daughter, yeah, yeah. about the same age as i was when i got mine you know seeing her and and the the amount of information that she has at her disposal compared to what i had you know at the time she didn't uh, even know she didn't even know that you couldn't say no right yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly and i remember i i got the uh, got the tortoise from my cousin because it got loose from, you know, he was nice, he had it out in the yard and it got it loose. And so he's like, you know, if you can find it, you can have it. And I spent the whole visit, you know, my cousin's house looking for a tortoise, you know, walking all over along the Creek beds and like you know, through yards and stuff. And then I think as we were getting ready to leave or something, the neighbor brought it over and said, I found this in my yard. And he's like, Oh, I guess you can have it. You know, so I like, nice. took it home that day and yeah, it was pretty cool. So, I don't know. So, so, Tortoises are so cool. basically, I like them. So, basically, Dr. Dr. Julinder hasn't been the expert herper uh, his entire life. That, that is more of an onset later in life <laughs> at finding, yeah. finding yeah. all the, well, I, the I like to, there. I like to blame it on private property. You know, you can't, you that, can't go oh, looking that's on fair. private property for her. That's so, fair. Yeah, it would right. have been outside private, but I mean, tortoises blend in really well, especially these, you know, Mediterranean, they're kind of yellowy colored and they just blend yeah. right into the grass. Like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy, but man, these things are just tiny little, tiny little tortoises. Just, you know, it's, it's pretty fun. There uh, there's the cuteness factor of a tiny tortoise is pretty much unparalleled, you know? Yeah. Are they in the house or are they out? Are they, you got them they're, outside? They're inside. Yeah. She'll okay. take them out every day, give them some sun, you know, give them a little bath, help them, you know, uh, whatever. And give obviously them. they can't stay outside year round, right? Not, not yet. Not, yeah. Not at that yeah. size. So she's just got them in an enclosure. In when, her room. when they get older, they can, they can, uh, yeah, yeah they're, they're make pretty, the winter. No problem there. Um, not, I know not outside. Another... No, we'd bring them in in the winter, but they can be outside yeah, okay. for a large part of the year. Part and of that's the, the plan okay. is to keep them outside in a tortoise run and have is it, it protected is it, and stuff. But isn't there a tortoise guy that's out there in Utah that we met at, at Super Show? Yeah, he's he's down in Vegas area. Um, Tyler, oh, okay. Oh, Tyler, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, who it was. He's a cool guy. Okay, so um, no, so that's definitely not the same situation at all there. Yeah, no, not, not in Vegas. But he was in in Utah and had. A, was he? He was and, a chameleon he, guy back then, though. Uh, <laughs> he switched okay. to tortoises, I think, when he moved gotcha. out to the desert and found out that keeping chameleons in the Vegas in desert the desert was a yeah. little Ooh, more difficult yeah. than that's dicey yeah, than in that's yeah. dicey. It's a little cooler up in Utah than it is in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, I I just been. Looking at, I mean, I've got an ad up right now. Looking at these tortoises, they're pretty cool. Oh, look at you! Oh <laughs> my god! Yeah. Oh. Anyway, that's, yeah, that's hilarious. They're, that that addiction. I mean, reptiles are very addictive, especially yeah. the variety and the coolness factor. So, yeah, I doing? am. 
Oh, I know. I, I, um, so I've got those, those, uh, those coastal, that coastal clutch. Yeah, and, yeah. uh, I, um, I separated my holdbacks out and I've, I was, was, uh, gonna do, gonna do some bloodline swaps with, uh, Eric Hernandez. Oh, um, cool. He, nice. yeah, he's, he's a, a long time, long time, uh, fan of, of Camus and, mm-hmm. uh, uh, heard that I had, I hatched that out and, and, uh, so I'm going to send the send red some, coastal man, right? You he is. So I'm going to send some nice coastal. ones his way. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So, um, and then, um, he's going to send me, send me some, uh, some red stuff from, from, uh, last year, this year. Uh, so yeah, in, in, interested in doing that. And I've got like maybe two of those, of those 15 that are still holding out on me, not wanting to feed. So uh-huh. those two can fuck uh-huh. right off. I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm not trying to force feed them yeah. or, or assist feed them anymore. Or, you know, it's like they're either going to eat or they're not going to eat. I'm not, you know, yeah. um, I'm not gonna, I dealt, I dealt with a male from, that came from the the female that sired this clutch mm-hmm. that th- I have to this day, and it doesn't eat. It mm-hmm. does not eat. Like it's probably I don't know five or six <laughs> years old, oh, and it God. looks like it's maybe two years old. Yeah. And it's Each one road you know road in just a year yeah, it's just, just yeah exactly, and it's barely it's, survive. Yeah, it's the most frustrating thing ever. Yeah. But it's like, well, you know what? Like I'll offer you food every once in a while mm-hmm. if you're around. You're around. Like, but. You know, I'm not trying to breed that. I'm never going to breed that to anything because I don't. I just don't want. I don't want to perpetuate that kind of. Get that crap out of here. You know. (laughs) Well, I had I had an individual like that, and I I put it in this tiny little uh you know like a tub to clean its cage. Right, it had this nice Mm -hmm. big roomy cage, and I put it in the tub, and then I went to get it out to, and it hadn't eaten in like six months, and so I. And I was getting kind of worried it was going to survive, you know. So I, I go to put it back mm-hmm. in its in its cage, and, it, and it's looking at me like it's hungry. So I get out of her mouth, and I gave it to him, he ate it. And I gave him another one, he ate it. And gave him another one, he ate it. You know, I just kept going. And for some reason, putting him in this little cramped, you know, smaller, even though he had like hide boxes galore in his cage. Yeah. Um, putting him in that small tub triggered his, uh, feeding response somehow. So, you know, he started eating and then he was pretty solid after that. So I, yeah, I don't know. I've, I wish uh, this was that kind of a case. Yeah. Yeah. This, no, I'm, I'm trying this to get little a, bastard. trying to get blackheads no. feeding and maybe I'm not oh so God. sad that I only got two this year because they're yeah. very frustrating and they just don't want to eat, you know, so I'm trying to, trying to get the uh, advice from get your hands on some snakes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Right. I like, yeah. I feel, I feel like you almost uh, need like, you know, <laughs> well, I thought about if, that, like taking a shed skin and like doing a little sausage just yeah. inside a shed skin and kind of wetting it down and getting I mean, the, are, are, putting a mouse bla- inside there. I don't are, know. Are there blackhead breeders who, who breed like, a kind of snake just to just to feed to their blackheads to get them going. I don't get the sense that that's the case. It seems like they just kind of assist feed until they take rodents. So we're we're kind of forcing. You know, it would it would make a it would probably be a, a smart thing to yeah. have feeder snakes. You know that, but then it's hard because you know we got in this because we like snakes, not because we want yeah. to feed snakes to stuff. So it's kind of a, a yeah, mixed bag. I, but I, I get that, but there's a, so many people talking shit about worthless you know, yeah. hybrid carpets and, yeah. you know, the, and, and it's like, you would think that wouldn't be a problem with all the people who make mutt, you know, mutt yeah. mutations. And, well, and then, yeah, and then the, that's the same crowd that also likes blackheads, you know? I mean, not yeah. that there's like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like uh, the, the blackhead Python is an Aussie kind of, you know, mm-hmm. um, carpet, carpet universe centric kind of uh, snake. Mm-hmm. So, well, there's plenty of people that feed, you know, stillborn carpets to blackheads, and yeah, know, that's, a, that's a, of course, a reasonable way to go. Or, or animals that you know are not not thriving. Maybe your, you know, your picky uh, red coastals go to a blackhead or something. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's uh, kind of how. That's probably a topic for another discuss. You know, another day. But you know. You Fair. Know, Feed, feeder snakes, you know, stuff like yeah. that. Or feeding stuff what it wants to eat rather than telling it, nope, this is what you're getting. I mean, it just makes more sense. And, yeah. and you know, yeah. maybe if you can, maybe if you get a strategy to transition that thing, sure. But, but you know, in, in the in the medium time, like, 
man, maybe that'd be so much less less pain yeah. that you'd have to go through. Be right I, I don't know. You Same know? thing with yeah. you know, lizards and anteresia babies and stuff. But like, I don't know. My anteresia are, are doing great. Like starting on uh, pinkies and stuff. Like they, yeah. they took off pretty quick this year. But and you know, some, I wonder. Some could argue that it's not as natural as you know giving them geckos or, or skinks or something. So you know, maybe maybe they'd be different animals if I was feeding them you know more lean uh, lizard prey. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Fair. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, things are moving well. The the inlands are almost all of them have taken, uh, you know, their fir- their first meal and you know without nice. any uh, fuss or anything. So that's been good. And then, uh, yeah, the the jungles are all eating except one holdout. And um, I actually sold a pair of jungles already. And so <laughs> I was kind of kind of wanting to see how they turned out, how they colored up. But you know, I were they regular they, jungles or were they? Um, uh, they were zebras. zebras or- yeah. Yeah, got a pair of zebras. So, and then, uh, yeah, things are things are going well. A lot of the anteresia have started pretty easily this year, which is always nice. Uh, my my favorite uh, clutch of anteresia is the ones that are being a little difficult, but they they hatched out most recently, so maybe that's part of it. And I just need to be a little patient. But These I, are westerns or wheat belts. Yeah, wheat yeah. belt stems and the striped uh, striped clutch that I have that's got some, nice. some crazy looking stuff in it. So. We'll uh, keep going with those uh, feeding trials, but yeah, we're off to a pretty good start this year with with feeding. Cool. And, uh, the brettles have yet to shed, so waiting on that and excited to see what they're going to look like. But yeah, yeah good times. Nice, so, shaping up nicely. You better be you better be ready to put the ads on your site and I know, I know. get busy. Yeah, I need to teach Summer how to do it. Maybe that's a better route. That's <laughs> but not. I, that's, I, it's not a bad plan. Yeah, I'm getting overrun in my office with geckos uh, from from the breeder. So I, I wonder if Bill needs some more uh, more geckos. But um, yeah, good stuff. Well, should we uh, fight a little? Okay. Get, get your fight on. Um, sure, sure. Okay, we're we're talking. Uh, like these PETA type organizations, PETA HSUS, and do they have any positive impacts on the hobby, or are they all negative? Like, are they just hell bent on taking away all our rights, and so they're not going to stop until we can't keep reptiles anymore? Or are there some good aspects of these organizations that help shape things in a positive way? So, okay, let's uh, flip the coin, see which uh, which side you get. Heads. It's tails. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. That's two oh, weeks in a man. row. Yeah, I know. Um, shoot. Well, uh, maybe I'll go with the the pro. <laughs> it's a little little harder to defend, but I, I'll give it a shot. That they that they that help they, they help shape the in, you know that sh- help shape things in a positive way, even though their tactics may not be great. Okay. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the challenging side. <laughs> that is the challenging side. <laughs> yeah. In my opinion, that may be the challenging side. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. uh, but I'm gonna let you go first. So. Of course you are. Of yeah. course you are. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I think I I think in you know a lot of these a lot of these uh, groups tout themselves as animal rights uh, organizations and and. Uh, you know, while I think that their heart is probably in the right place, um, you know, the, the the net effect that they have uh, probably is not one of, of positivity. Um, you know, I, I think you can look at dogs and cats and, and some of the issues that, that PETA and, and, and HSUS have kind of gotten themselves into where they're literally euthanizing animals, um, and, and, you know, to save them from cruelty or, or abuse. And, um, you know, you know, I just, I fail, I fail to see how an animal advocacy group, you know, wins or hits the mark when, when they're, you know, when their strat, one of their strategies is euthanasia for yeah. a population. Um, you know, I, I think that there's probably, you know, better ways for them to, um, 
you, you know, spend their money and, and they're well funded. They're, they're, they're yeah. people who, who pay money to them who really care about animals. And, and unfortunately, I think that a lot of that, that potential revenue gets, you know, used in ways that, um, I think most animal lovers would probably not you know, agree with if they were, uh, you know, on the decision end of, of the way some of these, um, organizations spend their money. And, and, you know, I think they're probably well meaning. Um, but, but I, I just don't, I, you know, I think that there's education, there's outreach and conservation that mm -hmm. they can do, but I, I don't, you know, I, you know, and, and I get that conservation of, of, you know, uh, captive bred dog populations probably has some euthanasia in involved yeah. in it. Right. Like yeah. that's, that's, pro there's probably, but, but, and, and that's just bad press, right. That's not, um, and, and, you know, there's, you know, obviously when you talk about groups like that, um, you know, that they're, the, there's there's governmental agencies that are euthanizing aggressive dogs and mm -hmm. and uh, so so you know some of it just has a bad look yeah. um and you know i i think when they get in the business of talking about animals that they poorly understand and that they really have no interest in understanding and and and, and frankly that they that they use the low hanging fruit to vilify. Mm -hmm. Um, they're, they're not, they're, they're not, um, they're not coming to the table in a gen, in, in a genuine or, 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 or they're being disingenuous with, you know, the way they are, um, portraying themselves. I, I don't, I don't think that reptiles are unreasonable pets. I think that some reptiles can be unreasonable sure. pets for some people. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think some dogs can be unreasonable pets for some yeah. people. Um, mm -hmm. I, my dogs are a handful and <laughs> I would not recommend my, you know, cattle dogs to everybody, but they, they have a, a loyalty and an intelligence and a drive that I really like in a dog. And, and, um, they've been great for my family. You know? Now, if you're the FedEx guy or you're <laughs> my neighbors, maybe sometimes you don't feel that way. I get that. I understand that. But at the same time, you know, um, they just because no rescuing. <laughs> sure. Ju yeah. Just because well, my FedEx guy or my neighbors don't understand that just like HSUS or, or PETA don't understand that it doesn't mean that they're invalid or that they don't, uh, you know, that they, that they aren't great pets. So, you know, I think in the same way that somebody cannot understand something who's not, who, who doesn't own it or hasn't been a part of it, um, it is the same way that, you know, um, that, that maybe they shouldn't be the ones who are out front pushing policy towards, uh, how we view pets. Yeah. And, and one of the, I mean, to kind of go along with that, one of the uh, classic examples of how PETA kind of goes wrong or, or these, these more radical – I don't know that it was PETA, but it was more one of these radical animal rights organizations that were up here in, you know, in my neck of the woods. They went to a coyote research facility, and they released all the coyotes from their cages, right, as kind of a protest to say they need to be free or whatever. And all the coyotes were male, so they basically just spent all night – you know, fighting and killing each other. And so, you know, the researchers went back to a facility full of, you know, maimed and half dead, uh, coyotes. So yeah. you know, what, a, if you care about the animals, that was a really stupid move to mm -hmm. you know show you care mm -hmm. about the animals. So yeah, a lot of their actions are kind of misguided. Now on the, on the other side, um, you know, a lot of reptile, uh, businesses or, or keepers, kind of do things the wrong way as well and they're they're not ethical they're not keeping their animals in a responsible manner and sometimes they've done some of those like undercover things where you got your you know undercover PETA agent that goes in and works for these places and films them in secret and shows some of these despicable practices frankly that are that are done mm -hmm. um you know in the name of of liking reptiles or loving reptiles and they're just not their, their actions are not consistent with that. Right. And so mm -hmm. they're, they're doing things that are, that are unethical and, and, uh, uncaring towards these 
uh, reptiles that we all care about, you know. So um, I, I, even though they might have the goal of preventing everybody from keeping reptiles, I think that kind of check and balance of having such a radical organization out there with the potential of, of exposing, you know, uh, mishandling or things uh, in the in the reptile community um, kind of has maybe a little bit of weight. Maybe you second guess whether or not you should treat an animal the way you you, you might be you know tempted to treat it or whatever. And you know, kind of the optics of things maybe keep you from doing stupid things with your your animals. Now I know like some industries were unregulated for the longest time and so that a lot of practices evolved that were frankly you know unhumane and and uh is that the word unhumane inhumane inhumane yeah Yeah. (laughs) sorry um and uh like you know the the food animal industry like you know just packing chickens into a cage where they pump out eggs and stuff you know that's uh, is is it maybe somewhat necessary to have you know more chickens per square foot than maybe PETA is comfortable with? Um, sure. Yeah, but but you know, can it go too far the other way? Of course, you know. And so <laughs> having these these organizations that uh, question some of those practices is probably a good thing to have in in a lot of ways. So um, I, I so- think you know from that aspect, just the fact that they exist. Um, could could have a second guess some some inhumane practices. So yeah, c- touching on a couple of points there. I mean, I think you know, I think last week's episode with Doctor Zach about you know science and in in uh, in herpetology or or in the community in the hobby, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of a thing. Yeah. You know, I, I think I think science. Uh, you know, in, in those cases, in, in the use of science in the case of PETA or, or HSUS is, is kind of the same, the kind of the same issue. And I think, you know, a lot of times that they, they don't, you know, they don't, uh, you know, look at, let's look at, 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 at industrial farming practices. You know, they, they go in and they secretly film, you know, ca- how cattle are slaughtered, um, and, and how, how you know kind of a brutal practice that is and and you know that's a fda gov- regulated government agency and i promise you i promise you the fda has looked at humanely that how to most humanely euthanize those animals mm-hmm. um now does everybody in that in their butchering those animals follow that i i would assume they're regulated to do so you know mm-hmm. can you control everybody 100 percent of the time or 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 somebody who's you know not just like you can't control every herper who does a dumb thing. You you can't control, yeah. you know, every, every cattle processor who does a dumb thing. So, you know, this whole kind of gotcha mentality that they have, um, I, you know, I, I just, I, I feel like, um, I underst I understand that there's people making bad decisions around animals. There's people making bad decisions everywhere. And, and it kind of goes to our whole like cancel culture of like, but, but let, let, let's be realistic is, you know, the, the, the agent, you know, HSUS and PETA who are going in and filming these, these unscrupulous acts under the cover, they're not also going back and filming, you know, the, the shining examples of people mm-hmm. who are reptile breeders and they're not putting that out there as this is how you shouldn't do it, but this is how you should do it. They're yeah. just saying, this is how you shouldn't, this is do, how it, you shouldn't right? do it. So get rid yeah. of everything. So, yeah. and, and, and they take, they use, they use a negative example, which of course everywhere, you know, you can always find a negative example, right? Yeah. And that's kind of my point in the cattle, uh, you know, with the cattle is you can always find that negative example. If mm-hmm. you, if you can get a camera into the right place, um, and, and most people love to eat their beef, but they don't really want to know how it's, and, and when they do, <laughs> Hey, how the sausage is made, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not a good yeah. look. And maybe, yeah. maybe you make a choice about how you eat, um, based on that, or what do you change your preferences? But, but I just think it's disingenuous. Um, and, and you know, mm-hmm. I, I think, um, should, should we advocate for the humane treatment of animals? Absolutely. hundred yeah. percent all the yeah. time in, in our food, in our food supply system, in our, in our captive pet 
you know, trades, of course, of -hmm. course we should, but, but should these agencies be the ones who are the, who are the, the, the nightstick uh, in, in doing, I don't think so. I think Mm -hmm. that that goes, that should go to federal regulators and to, and to regulatory agencies. Um, And, and if they're not doing their job, then, then, you know, maybe, maybe these places do have some, um, good that they can they, that they can do but but by Thank and large no. <laughs> but by and large i'm i'm not i don't think <laughs> yeah. that the way they behave and the way they practice are a net positive i don't yeah. think that they've changed the cattle industry for the better i don't think they've changed chicken farm what i think has changed chicken farming better for the better is free range initiatives uh mm-hmm. you know uh, uh ecological uh like l- low till you know where mm-hmm. where people are using um different um practices where you spread them out you let them poop in over a broader area you use a more holistic farming approach mm-hmm. uh which which works against kind of the centralized agriculture that we're we're doing. I think that's done yeah. far more than 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 PETA has ever done or HSUS has ever done for de- the deindustrializing or the dehumanization or the de you know the the the. De- the the d good of of uh animals you know yeah well and and i mean we don't know but those changes may have come or those practices may have come as a result of the efforts of some of these more extreme groups and you know i i'm sure that they would consider that a win you know that more uh free range chicken farms are are popping up and and hopefully you know they have some advantage to compete you know for the marketplace you know i think people will pay attention and say I, i'd rather buy free range eggs than you know the farm farm uh, factory farm type eggs but you know you, you've got a point right their their tactics are extreme they they kind of base all their uh tactics off of fear you know look mm-hmm. at what you're doing to these poor little puppies and kitties and and chickens and you know don't and and Again, like I'm all for for ethical treatment of animals, and and you know I'm kind of in one of those uh, uh, contested areas of of research where we do use animal models for some of our uh, viral studies, right? And so, um, do I love animals? Yes. Do I care about the rodents that are in my you know research facilities? Of course I do, and I would probably contest there are no more well cared for animals than rodents in a lab, you know, to, to, mm-hmm. to some extent. Um, so they, they receive all the, you know, they, they, we have a veterinarian on call for, for anything that's happening. That's not in the expected range and, and, uh, you know, all sorts of, uh, regulations and, and, and food and water. And, 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 like and what do we do? Do we say, well, you know what the, 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 the value of, of lab animals is more important than humans and we should go back to dying from preventable diseases yeah, yeah of that, course. that there's a trade you know off. like yeah. there's definitely a trade-off and yeah. you know i think i think what you have to to realize is is if you take that mentality what you're perpetuating is the ex- is is the extreme where you say yes people should die from preventable diseases mm-hmm. humans should decline population should decline yeah. and it leads you to a very and look i get it you know our population is not going down we're we're not trending towards moderation conservation mm-hmm. or, uh, or or the middle ground in any way so i i i, I get that it's it's it's, well, it's a well, I, I would disagree there there are definitely efforts to to mitigate or or you know help mitigate the efforts or or the the effects of human populations you know there's conservation Mm -hmm. efforts there's there's lots of efforts to improve um our situation despite the you know high population or whatever Um, well and i think standards of care go towards moderating population more than anything else And, and and again too in in the research industry like i listened to some of the old professors that were back in the day and like i mean an acceptable or i don't even know if they had acceptable and unacceptable methods of euthanasia you know like right when you were done with the rat, you just whacked it over a side of a bench and threw it in the garbage or something, you know, like things have changed for the better in that regard where mm-hmm. animals mm-hmm. are, are considered 
you know, important and their life matters as much as, you know, any other life. So, and I think if you're a true animal lover, you know, you, you appreciate the value of life, but you also balance that with the understanding that some animals eat other animals, you know, and mm-hmm. there, there is some stress in being eaten by, you know, a predator and, and nature is, is sometimes brutal, you know, those kind of things. So, and, and I guess, I guess my whole thing is like, do, do, does the world need an HSUS or a PETA to get that message? Do, do we need those organizations to be there to give us that message? That, you know, that's, that's a, that's a good question and kind of the focus of the debate today. And, and, you know, maybe not, but they need something that's kind of counter to, you know, these wide practices. Like somebody has to come along and say, you know, the fact that that farmer is beating that cow, you know, punching it in the face to get it to do something, that's probably not a good thing for the cow yeah. or the farmer. You know, maybe he's some psychotic, you know, individual that doesn't need to be around animals. So then they say, hey, FDA, let's do something, you know, government, let's do something mm-hmm. about this. This is, we need some regulations for this. And so they make rules, you know, yeah, you, you can't just beat your animals and that's, that's against the rules and that's against the law. Will it still happen? Of course, you know, you can't watch people all the time, you know, but hopefully they, they will do it less or whatever, because there's a law in place, you know, that. Yeah. Kind of and, and, and I, and I feel like, you know, animal standards and animal practices have definitely improved, right? We, uh-huh. I think we can agree on that. And yeah. so I think, what, what, you know, where we, where we go is, is it because of these independent agencies that push an agenda? And, and I, you know, I kind of feel like, um, you know, they highlight the, the, there's a place for highlighting the ugly, but mm-hmm. It, it's that it's it's the next part that bothers me where they take an extremist approach to restrict the, the to the restricting to the full restriction to the max restriction to the point where you know they're talking about people shouldn't own reptiles or or fish or you know what whatever and and, and once they're done with that what they're really talking about is people shouldn't own pets Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think their, their, their ultimate goal is, is the fact that people shouldn't own any animal, that every animal should be free, which never mind the fact that they're glossing over a whole other set of ecological issues around f- animals roaming free in, in their, dis- in their destroyed or destroy, you know, disappearing habitats. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so I just, I feel like they're ecologically short sighted. They're extremist in, in the way they, they think about things. And, and, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because the, I, and, and you know what? I, I guess I'll be honest and say that that I don't know a lot of PETA people. I don't know, but but the the interactions or or the interactions that I've seen, they just they don't come off as reasonable people. No, they no, don't no. come off as yeah. you know. They come off as extreme or yeah. or very hardcore ish people. And and you know, I as an environmental guy, I fully support you know environmental interventions, but I I can't support environmental extremism. You know, I, I don't I don't support that. I uh, yeah, you know, it, it I, doesn't. I agree, but I guess I guess my point is whether we agree with their tactics or not, do they have? results and sometimes they do i mean they definitely influence places like PetSmart, you know that don't uh sell live feeder rodents you know things like that where you but know, is that a reasonable thing I, you know some may say no others may say yes that's the, i guess I mean, that's the i, I guess the debate, my whole but, thing is uh, yeah for, for the from pet smart point of view it, it doesn't impact their bottom line enough to worry about it so they're not going to sell a, a feeder rodent you know based on a moral principle that maybe was you know uh, reinforced or or put on them by one of these radical organizations um you know it, it's it's hard to say whether or not that's a positive or a negative i guess it depends I on do, what but side i just of the don't line i just don't on. see yeah. how i just don't see how PETA or hsus's bully pulpit you know it, um uh, you know bow brow beating uh pet smarter petco uh changes anything when you have uh lane labs or or you know any of the other rodent breeders who do this who are going to be like uh yeah no uh that 
we're not doing that because there's tons of animals that need to eat. And yeah. that's just the, I mean, like it doesn't, none of their, none of their humanity uh, cries over feeder rodents changes the fact that there's pets in the world that need to eat. Now, if nobody owned those pets, those, those animals would still need to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. But so, so if they're doing it in nature and that's happening naturally, that's okay. But when humans get involved, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. I, and, and I, I mean, just, we're, we're happy it, to like put out poison bait and let the rodents, you know, suffer absolutely. slowly and die or, or, you know, some of these live traps where they might stay in there and, you know, s slowly suffer and die. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of things when, when humans and, and you know, hunting is a great example of that, you know, mm -hmm. when, when we've messed up the predator populations and, and resulted in a, an increase in an abundance of prey that that's going to suffer and die because unless we intervene and have hunting and things like that, you know, yeah, well, we and, created and, the problem, the, but, but also the solution is not just to let all these deer slowly suffer and die. And look, there, there's, there, uh, you know, hunting is heavily regulated. Uh, can mm -hmm. somebody go out and shoot something without a tag? Yes. Are there if if a game there's warden catches you, yeah. they're, they're, definitely they'll take same, your same shit. They'll take your, and, you know, they'll take, yeah, they'll take your yeah. gun, your car, your boat, your uh, mm -hmm. your everything. Like they yeah. they don't mess around with that. And yeah. and you know, for elk and and moose and they, there's only a few tags a year, and depending upon the area. So mm -hmm. so this is this is stuff that's highly regulated and. and this is what I'm talking about is, is these agencies that do this, they do it data driven. They did, you know, they, they look at the populations and, and then based on what those populations look like, you know, that's how many tags they put sure. out. Yeah. Yeah. Hunting is probably a bad example of that. And I think, I think a lot of people are, are more scared into not hunting because, you know, they see all these sad videos that maybe some of these radical sure. organizations put out, but, but I think like, but, and, and um, I would also argue mm -hmm. If I may, if I may, sure, sure. That, that hunters are probably some of our best conservationists uh, in, in the sporting world. Uh, they, they care more about the environment and the animals than than I think they are ever given credit for sure. uh, and have yeah. done quite a bit of good, you know, for for wild populations uh, that they, they're not in this to to see animals disappear off the planet. And most of them yeah, love yeah. animals and love nature. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, again, you know, you contrast the hunter who who kills and takes animals versus, you know, PETA and HSUS. I see more compassion in a hunter who kills for sport than I do in an agency like PETA and HSUS. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, they're, they are euthanizing their animals in a humane manner. <laughs> Like they're, but they're but not they're not using they're euthanized, yeah, but, but, you know. and they're not processed. They're not using the meat, yeah, uh, yeah. to feed their family or sure. you know. I mean, I, again, you know that yeah. there's there's I mean, we there's have laws more on to, the books so we can't eat cats and dogs and horses. What you know? Yeah. What, a, what a crazy what crazy laws that is. But, that's and, 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 and I, you, you know, know that's I, that's fair that you yeah. you know you, you if you're euthanizing cats and dogs and you're eating them that's <laughs> that's a I, I get that I, I'm not you know I'm just saying I'm just saying that you know to to take somebody like a hunter and say well they just indiscriminately kill and well uh, that's that's not a that's not yeah. a fair you know that's not a fair assessment yeah so. um, well i mean some do some some are out there just to for the thrill of the kill or whatever to, sure. to put a trophy on their wall you know they'll go shoot it but a lot of times that's a double-edged sword too because it provides conservation efforts in the countries that they go hunt in and it provides uh, money for the local economy and they're spending tens of thousands of dollars to go hunt these you know animals over in you know africa or something like that you know? so, sure. yeah definitely uh you can look at it like that Dennis that got uh, demonized for hunting a, a lion, you know, by some of these radical organizations where it probably helped the lion populations because he pumped all this money into lion conservation. That lion probably was either a problem animal or something, you know, I guess well, he was and, a research animal. So maybe they d deemed his. You know, yeah. And, but, and, and, and generally, you know, animals, 
animals like apex predator animals that are hunted like that are are raised and and you know they're on game preserves and there there's you know there's reg it's not it's not just like we take this guy out in the middle of nowhere and yeah. we just let him go shoot at shit you know yeah, what i mean yeah. it's not it's not exactly. like that it's it's it, that's a that's a you know now now if you're you know killing elephants for ivory or something like that where it's you know a bit, mm. a bit more sketchy. That's, that's a different, that's a different story, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, uh, in, in an industry like ours, that's poorly self-regulated, um, there's elements like that that can, you know, could potentially be a benefit to bring awareness to, to the problem, problem organizations or, or businesses that are out there that don't give a crap about the animals and that will just keep them, you know, and just kind of let them squander and die. Um, because you know, well, they're not going to make me money cause they're sick. They might as well just die off anyway. Or there's, you know, dead and rotting animals in cages and things like that because they have mm-hmm. too many of these imported animals and they can't take care of them properly. You know, people like that should definitely go away. You know, these mm-hmm. flesh peddlers in the reptile hobby, uh, you know, and, and if it takes an undercover PETA agency to kind of expose that now I, I'm, I guess I'm maybe giving our regulatory agencies maybe hopefully credit that's due, but maybe more credit than they deserve when, you know, some organization, I hope they recognize that these organizations like PETA or HSUS are, are more radical or, or kind of on the fringe. Um, and that they, they take their recommendations with a grain of salt, you know, like maybe they shut down this, uh, reptile, uh, business that's keeping, you know, has all these dead animals or, or fine them or, or help, you know, give them mm-hmm. some motivation to fix those practices and keep their animals responsibly um, versus just saying, well, let's make all reptiles illegal to keep, you know, there's, there's some, there's def- definitely a lot of ground between those um, extremes where, you know, take care of the problem, but don't over-regulate and don't try to make everything illegal. Cause that's easier than, than <laughs> regulating it. And I could definitely give you a, a little bit on that. Where is if if these if these you know uh, NGOs were going in and 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 exposing problems and trying to work with the reptile community to get you know s- some of the 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 unscrupulousness that happens around us out of here and part and actually partner with us to mm-hmm. to make it better uh, yeah. and not and not you know sell the idea that we are a problem to be to be eradicated or fixed or you know mm-hmm. uh, rec- and recognize that you know we have a place i just you know unfortunately i think that their their agenda and their end game is much more radical than that and 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 the proof in the pudding is that they've decided it's easier to vilify us than it is to just work with us because yeah, it, in, it, 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 it 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 kind of to me kind of shows their hand to their end game right if they really mm-hmm. if they really cared and their goal was really to to make the reptile community better they would partner with us and 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 i think that that at some degree, we would welcome, you know, getting some of the, 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 the not good people or the not good practices out of, you know, the reptile community, but it's just, that's not what's happening, you know, and that's not their yeah. goal. That's not what they're doing. So, you know, that's why everyone rightfully so is like, yeah, they can freaking pack sand. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you, and, know? you know, I, and granted everybody's kind of view on different things is, is, different in some ways. I mean, I, I, I guess I'll use the example of, uh, you know, cane toads in Australia, right? When mm-hmm. I went over to Australia, um, there were some areas where there were just cane toads everywhere and I was encouraged to, to run them over with the car or, you know, or step on sure. them or whatever, when we see them in the environment and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I figured, well, it's not their fault. They're here. You know, they're established me stepping on this toad or, or running it over with the car is not going to make a hill of beans to, you know, their, their overall populations. And I've got close friends that say, no, the, the exact opposite of that. You are trying to, you're helping um, remove some of these problem animals from the environment. And that will help the animals that you care about in their natural environment. You know, their monitor lizard may not be killed by trying to eat this, uh, you know, cane toad from that was, you know, hatched out from an egg laid by that female that you ran over with your car. So, you know, I get both sides. 
I just, for me, and, and, and I guess that's kind of the, the idea is we don't want to try to, um, force others to see our point of view and to be forced to do our, uh, you know, the way we see it that, that needs to be done because there's more than one way to look at this. And that, and I mm-hmm. guess that's the, that, that's the, the whole concept of this podcast is seeing the complexity in things that maybe some people see as black and white. Like we <laughs> just look at HSUS and say bad, or look at PETA and say bad, completely bad, you know, but maybe there are some good impacts that they're having on, you know, to, to help us, identify issues that exist in different uh, areas of animal keeping, you know? So yeah, maybe for me, I don't enjoy seeing a, a cane toad die because it's, you know, was put in the, in, in the wrong place by people. Um, and, and frankly, like if I was, if I, if there was an effective method to eradicate cane toads from Australia, I would be all for it, especially if it was a, you know, rel- relatively humane. But method. do you feel like, do you feel like, <laughs> or, or not so humane? method? I, I was going to say, but, but, but I feel like, you know, what, what you basically said is, Hey, I'm cool with getting rid of cane toads as long as I don't get my hands dirty. Well, no, right? no, I'm not saying – no, I'm saying if if I discovered a way to eradicate cane toads and I was the one to carry it out, I would do it. What if the most effective means is running them over with a car? Well, that would take – millions of years to hit every cane toad with a I car, get I get know? it yeah. I'm just I'm but just yeah, saying yeah. I mean if I'm that just was saying the most, you, like if get, the most effective way was to to you know find some way to funnel them into a trap and then run them over with a lawnmower or, you know something like that that's horrible oh God. but you know yeah, yeah that's like pretty bad. but that's but pretty bad if, if that was the only solution to the cane toads and eradicating them from Australia I would say well the 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 good outweighs the bad you know, right. I'm not the species isn't going extinct. It's still healthy and happy in its natural environment. But in Australia, it does not belong. Same thing with cats in Australia. You know, I would not be opposed to hunting cats in Australia. Like yeah. that's a that's a very important. They're they're terrible on the you know ecology of Australia. They do not they don't belong there. But I've got great friends in Australia that have cats that they go outside and maybe kill a bird here or there or a lizard here and there, you know, and it's I don't agree with that. I think that's not a good way to do things, but, you know, they're fine with it and they they right. they they're uh, they're entitled to their opinions. But, you know, if we involve a government agency that kind of evaluates data and makes, you know, recommendations or, or laws in a responsible and, and, you know, data driven method, um, then, you know, let's, let's go with their recommendations and try to mm-hmm. get rid of cats. But, but, well, you know, there's some, some animals that are just protected no matter how horribly damaged. And I think we hit on that with, uh, Dr. Zach last week, um, that, you know, cats are much worse than tegus on the environment mm-hmm. uh, worldwide, you know, but we're going to focus on tegus in South Florida because they're scary big lizards rather than a cute cuddly cat that, ever, you know, most Americans like and, 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 and are okay with, you know, and I guess the other part that, that really kind of drives it home for me of why they're, why, you know, these, these, uh, mm. organizations aren't good is, is, you know, what they're, what they're, what, what they're really good at is fundraising and, yeah. and, and generating yeah, a lot of money that. Yeah. And, and, and what they and use their money for. And how, and it's how despicable. they funnel, it's how they funnel their money yeah. and their money's yeah. going into lobbyists. Yeah. And, and it's it, not going they were, to help animals. It's going yeah. to. It, change laws to make it illegal yeah. to have any animals. And I guess and, and, in the grand scheme, they probably think that's a better thing. Like, Oh, if the animals aren't, I think that's, captivity. I think they think that's a more yeah. effective strategy, but yeah. again, it, it speaks to their radicalism yeah. that they feel that They're by generating that on everybody else, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, and they understand that, that their opinion is not the popular one because they're doing they're they're using legislative processes rather than you know working with popular opinion uh, or work you know so so they don't fundraise a bunch of money and then give it to government agencies and say hey can we evaluate this and make some recommendations yeah. they give it to lobbyists who you know 
grease politicians to slip it into a you know some some shit into a bill and just and try to pass it carte blanche and sure. and that's where you know it's it's really kind of like okay that that's that's dirty pocket pool yeah yeah no i i i completely agree <laughs> like that there's no arguing that you know against that yeah. that uh they are very good at fundraising and they mm-hmm. they are very poor at preserving animal life you know they're they're yeah. euthanizing far more and, animals than they and i i think i think the the part that i dislike about it is is they're good at doing it by 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 using people's love for animals against them yeah yeah you know exactly they, they, yeah they're showing they, these poor little sad puppies on yeah. the commercials and then you think oh i'm donating to them so they're helping that poor little puppy they're rescuing it and giving it to a good home like me when the reality is they're euthanizing it and then they're using your donation to make it illegal to keep any animals. You know? Yeah. So, and, and, yeah, it's kind and, of a, and, you know, I mean, I guess maybe that, yeah. that that's not a stated goal and, and that's something I feel like their end goal is, is, is to, to, you know, eliminate, um, the, 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 the captive ownership of animals, which, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I, Look, man, since, since domestication of wolves, we've, we have had animals as companions. We're social creatures. Like, I just, I, I don't get it. Like, I don't, it doesn't, like, I don't see the, you know, um, I don't see the benefit for, for the animals. I don't mm-hmm. see, you know, I, I mean, my dogs are much better because I'm in their life. Yeah. I, 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 you're never going to convince me different. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Never. Mm-hmm. They get to comment on podcasts. They get to they get to do Free crazy range. fun shit with <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah, like it's like it's yeah. good. I mean, yeah. they live a good life. Mm-hmm. So you know, we, we, as do our reptiles. We, frankly, I mean, yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And we are getting. I mean, we care more about the environment. We care more about seeing the animals in their natural, you know, environments and 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 protecting the environment. Trying not to just flip logs and rocks indiscriminately. You know, we we try to clean up trash or whatever in in their yeah. environment. You know, those kind of things where we're more eco- ecologically minded and mm-hmm. care more about the planet and care more about. If we if we couldn't have those interactions with animals, I think that quality of life and the care for the environment would go downhill you know in, in general in a population well if, i mean if, if you just if you just looked at looked at animals and plants as a symptom of why to care about nature yeah. right and you yeah. didn't and you didn't care about plants or animals then you're right why would anybody care like wipe it all out pave it all over there's no re- there's no you know ne- never mind our fundamental connectedness and net necessity yeah. to to have biodiversity on this planet mm-hmm. you know if you, it, I, you know i don't think we'll exist without it but you know if maybe you're one of those people who thinks we can cool roll the dice on that good luck yeah, um, yeah. the science probably does not agree with you well clearly i picked the losing side and i declare you the winner but <laughs> i mean i you know, I, I, you know. I think there's 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 uh, thoughts to be made on both sides but sure. I, you know, overall i think they they are just radical and 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 uh out to just get rid of pet keeping completely and i think there are a lot of um good aspects to to having pets and to getting well, that connection with nature so and i will say that you know um and this is kind of an environmental thing uh and and, and you know uh and, and James Enhoff threw a snowball in uh, in in, yeah. in the Senate chambers yeah. and said, "Oh, I don't see any evidence Global of climate warming. change." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and one of my college professors was like, "You know, he is not your enemy because his view is clear and present. You know exactly where he stands, and he does not support any any type of of you know climate." you know, common sense, you know, that person. Yeah. The, yeah. The, and, and, and so I kind of feel like, you know, the, the PETA and HSUS are kind of like that, you know, they're extremists, you know, they're, they're out to lunch when it comes, it's, it's the, it, you know, it's that, it, it's that uh, more moderate, more quiet, more cunning. And, and that's who you really need to worry about. So I don't, mm-hmm. I don't necessarily worry about the PETAs and the HSUSs of the world because 
you know, they've played their hand pretty poorly. And, and, you know, one thing that they do do is raise money, but up until this point, you know, the, the will of, of, of humans, uh, to, to want and to keep animals, um, is far, far stronger than their ability to lobby, um, uh, so far. So, you know, that's, that's kind of the heartening piece of it to me at least. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> bunch of Looney Tunes, I say. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I hope this discussion was, uh, not too triggering for some and, and was, you know, had some useful comments for others and <laughs> was, was enjoyable. But anyway, yeah, uh, uh, that was, that was fun to talk about. Right. I, I keep getting distracted. You've got some snakes back there behind you, and I'm trying to figure out. Oh, what they are. that's There's, diamond pythons. Oh, okay. That's the diamond. Yeah, They're yeah, still yeah. inside. Yeah, I need to get yeah, them. Yeah. Maybe you get that dang cage finished and get them out. Yeah. But well, now it's you got a little more right time. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah, a yeah. Warm for them. Yeah, yeah I'll was, let them. I was curious how you were going to mitigate the the heat for for them. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've been, I, you know, I I think we touched on this, and we did. and yeah, we uh, did talk about it a little bit. And, and I'm, I, you know, I, the still still on the I don't, still on Well, the I mean, I, you know, I, I'm I'm, you know, I kind of have my plan, but I, I guess I I kind of need to set the cage up, which mm-hmm. which kind of would be like why I need to do it now and when it's really really oh, hot, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. I can kind of take some data see. and see like how how. Uh, you know, how my design performs. Cause yeah. I just, you know, I don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to get them out there and find out that it just gets too hot. But, you know, there's a part of me that's like, I'm going to do more in this enclosure to mitigate the, the heat of summer mm-hmm. than I did in my coastal enclosure and they do just fine. Yeah. So, yeah. um, you know, you- I, I think maybe I'm over concerned about it, but I don't know, you know, mm-hmm. maybe not. Did you pick up any of those Govi uh, temperature humidity uh, monitors? It's funny that you say that. I was just <laughs> yeah. I was just looking at getting some of those. I need to get yeah. a, a, a handful. I mean, they're of so those. inexpensive, and, and that's yeah. something you could just throw in different corners of the cage and monitor it. You know, just yeah. go in with your phone and download the information. And you have like a you know shows the range of temperatures over days or weeks or months yeah. or whatever you want. Yeah, and so, I, I mean, I've kind of, of got a I've kind of got a good plan going forward with how to mitigate the heat of summer. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I think, you know, a nice big thick substrate level at the, at the base of the cage and then, and then something under the cage where they can retreat to, Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like you said, getting some govies and just kind of taking some temperature data. Um, I, I, you know, I got some time here. I, I, Mm -hmm. I definitely, um, you know, we, we don't get really horribly hot until, uh, like September, you know, uh, late, August, latest September. September. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so it's warm here now, but it, it usually hits nineties and is, is God awful, uh, in mm-hmm. September, mm-hmm. uh, timeframe. So, so I have enough time to kind of finish up and, yeah. and get the govies going and kind of see what the, the temperature is like. But that said, you know, um, the coastals, they, you know, they'll hit, they'll hit upper eighties, low nineties. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, oh, yeah, and they yeah. do find that, you know, they're, they're I'm good. Sure they're, diamonds they're, do in their natural habitat. Yeah. As and, well. and, yeah. and, 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 and obviously like when it's hot during the day, the coastals aren't out. And then yeah. once the sun they, goes they, down, they come they out and they, they, yeah, they, they, they're mm-hmm. out in the cooler, the cooler night air and mm-hmm. hang out out there until they tell, you know, catch a little sun in the morning and then they're back in there to hide from the heat of the day. So, yep. you know, that, I think, I think I think they'll be just fine. Um, yeah. But yeah, just you know, uh, always kind of uh, you, you get in your head thinking all those different, you know, like oh, I got all these parameters, yeah, all this yeah. stuff, you know, yeah. and you you just you just want to make sure you're doing the best for the yeah. animal and, and well, check, uh, making may, sure. But maybe check out some of the the Rick Shine literature and see kind of what the wild diamonds yeah. are doing, what kind of temperatures they're hitting, and see if you can model that with your enclosure. That's yeah. Base it on the, the most of all Rick Shine out. stuff's online, right? Like you yeah, can, yeah, yeah. You, you go mean, to his you, website; he's got all his papers listed, and most of oh, them nice. are okay. freely accessible. You know, or you can type him in what a Google great Scholar. You know, Rick Shine and Diamond Python. You'll come up with you know a bunch of free articles. I'm sure because they're yeah, yeah they've been I, published long enough ago that they're they're definitely. Free. I think Rick Shine is my Steve Irwin by far. Uh, Rick you Shine's know? the man. He's, he's oh, so yeah. cool. I'm I'm this, getting close. Like I'm I'm 
pretty far into his book and it's just i just love i i need to i i need to get that yeah is is the book expensive is it really pricey or no no? it's like 30 bucks something like that. oh hell i mean the soft i got the softback edition i didn't get the hardbound but yeah it's it's uh very affordable yeah nice and you can get over i mean you can buy it from him directly but that's going to add a lot of uh, to the shipping costs and stuff but uh you know i got mine on on amazon sorry rick okay yeah okay well yeah hopefully the money goes to him but (laughs) yeah um yeah so i i uh are you can catching up on any podcasts or you you have time to do that again no i really i haven't um you know i i uh I caught your I caught, interview on the was it Lizard Brain Radio? Or you were, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was finally, a, a little while got, back. To, got, you got, got to that. listen to that. Yeah, yeah. I gave I gave you fun. your just dues on that. I I believe. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, you're very generous. I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> um, I I liked well uh, the, deserved. Uh, I've been listening to this, uh, Pingle uh, podcast so much. Pingle and uh, one of the one of the guys that did his uh, graduate work at Utah State uh, Andrew Durso was on so that was fun nice. to hear, hear him and he does he does a really cool uh blog called uh, S- uh snakes life uh, something like snakes are long but life life is short ago. something like that yeah <laughs> i'm sorry i butchered that you know my brain but uh, anyway it was it was a fun one and it looks like he's got some more good stuff up there so um, I, I like his podcast. He does a good job. And then looks like the Herpticulture Network guys had uh, Pete Call on and Tim Tim. So uh, what? Tim oh, Morris, I got sorry, Tim Morris. Yeah, I need to check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That looks good. Uh, they, they I know. I you yeah. know what? From all the falderall of work and all that, I am like so far <laughs> behind. Yeah. On podcasts, yeah. so. Um, um, and MP put out a new one. I haven't listened to it yet, but it's got it's uh, on breeding black white lips. So I guess mm-hmm. he's gonna impart his wisdom and in, in his experience in getting white nice. lips. I guess he had some hatch out, right? So yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's pretty exciting. Way to go! Yeah, Owen. I told I told him that was macintastic. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And uh, you know, always uh, I always enjoy listening to Carpets and Coffee. I, I just yeah, I like listening to the Podfather. He's good, and, and Lucas and and Owen. You know, they they make a good mix. It's fun to yep. listen to them. Yeah, yep. no, definitely. Well, I was I was a little concerned. I I heard uh, Eric's breaking up fights at work, and I'm like, what is <laughs> no. going on? I mean, I guess I guess I did know that he he worked in kind of you know not yeah. not the sketchy area of town, but oh, but it's a very maybe, maybe area not the of town. <laughs> maybe not the easiest maybe not the easiest clientele coming yeah. through the door. So. I mean, that's, that's uh, stay not stay the safe out there, Podfather. We need yeah. you exactly. I I tried to give him a call today, but I think he's out herping, so. He he, he gotcha. didn't answer the phone, but well, yeah. uh, good thing he didn't. He he's off him. enjoying himself. That's <laughs> yeah, good. yeah, he's, he he's finding some cool snakes and uh, water snakes and stuff. So getting out there herping, good job, man. Well, I think we did it. Um, yeah, I agree. Thanks, <laughs> thanks again to the Morelia Python Network. Uh, check them out on their socials and uh, listen to their podcast. There's some great content out there, um, and. Uh, Thanks to to Eric and Owen, and and we'll uh, uh, hope to catch you again next week for another episode of Reptile Fight Club. Until next time, don't do crime. Fight Club. <laughs>